7.4, we're going to be solving logarithmic equations and inequalities, okay? Now, we're, we kind of already know how to solve logarithmic equations because we've been doing inverses of logarithms. So, we already know that an inverse of a logarithmic situation is an exponential situation. So, we know that when we have an exponent and you want to get rid of it, you apply a log. Or whenever you have a log and you want to get rid of it, you have to raise it to be the power of the base of your choice. Um, so, in other words, let's put that down in writing. To get rid of a log, simply raise both sides of the equation to become the powers of base, whatever base was on your log. Okay? So, let's say you had, let's say you had the simple logarithmic equation, log base 3 of x equals 2. I know you guys could think about that uh, because we know how to think about it in exponential form. And you could be thinking 3 to the second power gives me the x value. So we know that the x equals 9, right? But let's actually go through this and solve using inverse operations. In other words, if I wanted to solve for x, I, I would want to get rid of log base 3. And it says down here, to get rid of a log, simply raise both sides of the equation to become the powers of the base of whatever base was on your log. So what this is telling us to do is to take this left side and raise it to be the power of base 3. And what you do to one side, do to the other side, so you take the 2 and raise it so that the 2 becomes the power of base 3 also. Okay? So, whoops. So in reality, uh, what we have is 3 to the log base 3 of x equals 3 to the second, which we know is 9. So 3 to the log base 3, that cancels out. The x comes down. The equal sign comes down. And of course, on this side, we have 3 squared. And obviously, we already know that 3 squared is 9. So your answer is x equals 9. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when we're solving equations, if you have a log and you want to get rid of it, you're going to raise both sides of the equation to become powers of the base that you had on your logarithm so that the log could cancel out. So maybe uh, you want to jot that down. So let's turn to the book, page 478, and we're going to go through the examples. Now, I don't believe that the book explains it that well, which is why I'm explaining it to you guys right now, and that's why you guys are paying attention right now. Um, example one, it says... Solve log base 36 of x equals 3 halves. Now, they just jump right into it and get the answers. But you can't really understand it unless you have these, no these notes written down. To get rid of a log, simply raise both sides of the equation to become the powers of base, whatever base was on log. So, right here, I want to get rid of the log base 36. All right, I need to do the inverse of log base 36, which is really raising it to be the power of base 36. Okay, the idea is you want to get x by itself. If you had an x plus 3, you get rid of the plus 3 by doing a minus 3. If you had a 2x, 2 times x, you get rid of the 2 times by dividing both sides by 2. But in this case, you have a log base 36. The inverse of log base 36 is raising it, the whole thing, to be the power of base 36. And of course, what you do to one side, you do to the other. So you're going to take this side and raise it to be the power of base 36. And the equal sign is now going to come down right between the 36s. So what we really have is 36 to the log base 36 of x equals 36 to the 3 halves. Now we all know that 36 to the log base 36 cancels out. The x is going to come down as the left side of your equal sign and the 36 to the 3 halves power, we could actually do that. Let's uh, follow along with the book and see uh, how they, they do that. So notice, they just went from the original to this one. They didn't even show the process of raising both sides to be the power of base 36. So that's why I wanted to explain that to you so you don't get confused when you look at this. So they raised both side, sides to be the power of base 36. That cancels out 36. And what do we have left? We have the x, which is right here, the equal sign right there, and of course, 36 to the 3 halves power, which is right there, 36 to the 3 halves power. And then they manipulate the 36, they change 36 to look like 6 squared. And why would they do that? Because we know that a power to a power, you multiply. So 2 times 3 halves, that would cancel it out, and you'd end up with 6 to the 3rd. And if you did 6 to the 3rd, 
uh, your answer would be 216. Okay, so we are able to get rid of any type of log as long as we raise both sides of the equation to be the powers of the base that you had on the log to start with. So maybe we should, uh, well, there's an answer right there. Uh, maybe we should see how to get this answer. Let's forget 20, let's pretend we don't know that the answer is 27. What are we going to do to both sides? Base 9. You raise it to become the power, power base 9. The equal sign is no longer up here in the exponents. It's now down there between the 9s. And then, of course, 9 to the log base 9 cancels out. You have x, you have equals, and you have 9 to the 3 halves power. Now, you could think of it as power over root. So you could say, oh, the square root of 9 is 3, and then 3 to the third power is 27. Or you could manipulate the 9 and rewrite it as 3 squared. So if you did do that, you'd end up with uh, 3 squared to the 3 halves power. And of course, power to power, you multiply, that cancels out. And 3 to the third is the answer that they give here, 27. Okay, so uh, you could get rid of any logarithm as long as you raise both sides to be the powers, uh, to become powers of the base that was on the logarithm that you wanted to get rid of. That was on page 478. Let's jump to 479. Of course, it gets more fun. Uh, 479, it says, solve log base 2 of x squared minus 4 equals log base 2 of 3. Um, we want to get rid of the log base 2s on both sides. So what am I going to do to both sides of this equation? You're going to cancel the log base 2. How are you going to do that? By raising them to become powers of base 2. So you can put a big 2 right there, a big 2 over here, an equal sign between the 2s. That way you know that 2 to the log base 2 cancels out, 2 to the log base 2 cancels out. You're going to have a new equation that says x squared minus 4 equals 3x. And we could actually go through and, I mean, they show us the work here. After you cancel both sides out, you'll, you'll have that. x squared minus 4 equals 3x. And this is a quadratic equation, and we, we've done, we've solved quadratic equations plenty of times before. We're going to subtract 3x, move it to this side. You have a quadratic trinomial. At this point, you could use the quadratic formula, but the easier way of doing it is to factor, split, and solve. So when you think what times what is negative 4, that if you combine together is negative 3, that would be a negative 4 and a positive 1. Now it's in factored form. And because of the zero product property, we know that if you have something times something and it equals zero, you could take the first something and set it equal to zero. You could take the second something and set it equal to zero. And that ultimately gives you two easy equations. And you get two answers, x equals 4 and x equals negative 1. I, I, you know what? I forgot to mention this on the first example that we did on the previous page. You need to check your answers. Okay, you need to check your answers. You need to plug them back in and make sure that you never end up with a negative inside your logarithms, all right? You can never have an, a negative value inside your logarithm. I mean, think about that. If you had log base 2, let's, let's go with something simple. Bless you. Log base 2, and let's say of negative 2, what's the answer there? There is no answer. You can't do that. Because even if you were to think of it in exponential form, 2 to what power gives you negative 2 as an answer? It doesn't exist, right? Because 2 to the 1 gives you positive 2. And 2 to the negative 1, it doesn't give you negative 2. 2 to the negative 1 gives you 1 half. So there's no way that you can have a logarithm that, or, or there's no way you could take the logarithm of a negative number. It just, it just doesn't work. Does that make sense? There's something very important. You cannot have a negative inside uh, what you're taking the log of. So going back to our solutions, if I were, as a matter of fact, you can't even have zero. So I kind of messed up right there. I should have also said you can't have zero either. And if you think about this, when you plug in four right in here, uh, four squared, that's 16, 16 minus four, does that give you zero or a negative number? No, so that, that works out so far. And if you plugged in a four over here, that gives you 12, that's not a negative number either. So it looks like 4 is an answer. I mean, we still haven't completely checked it, but at the very least, we know it doesn't give us a negative. Now, if I plug in negative 1 in here, 1 squared, negative 1 squared is 1, 
but one take away four is negative three. Now we know that's a no-no. You cannot have a negative number inside this uh, logarithm, okay? It's not that your answer cannot be negative. Your answer could be negative, but when you plug it in, you can't end up with a negative in here, and when we plug in negative one in here, clearly it gives us a negative number in there, and we cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. It just doesn't work. And even if I were to plug in negative one over here, three times negative one, that's negative three, you can't get an answer to log base two of negative three. You just can't do it. So negative one ends up being an extraneous solution, and the only correct answer is four. So they actually check it, and they go all the way through, and yes, four works, and over here negative one does not work because you end up with negatives inside the logarithms. Now you need to understand that you can't have negatives inside of the logarithms. You cannot even have zero inside of the logarithms. Let me show that. Let's say log base two of zero. What's the answer? There is no answer. Because if I were to ask you, well, two to what power, two to what power gives you zero? There's no, it doesn't exist. Two to the, two to the zero even is not zero. Two to the zero is one, right? 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the positive 1 is 2. There is no way that you could end up with 0 as an answer there. So you cannot have negative numbers or 0. In other words, the inside of your logarithm has to be greater than 0, right? The inside of your logarithm, this and this, has to be greater than 0. Now that's going to play a very important role when we get to solving inequalities. So let's memorize, or let's understand that now, that the inside of the logarithm has to be greater than zero. The inside of the logarithm has to be greater than zero. So we double checked it and when we plugged in this negative one, we ended up with something negative and we know that it has to be greater than zero so that can't be an answer. Over here also we ended up uh, with a number that's negative and we know that the inside of the logarithm has to be greater than zero. To this guy right here, number two, let's solve well, I want to get rid of those log base 3s. Technically, I want to raise both sides to be powers of base 3. The log base 3 with the 3 cancels out. That cancels out. You end up with x squared minus 15 equals 2x. Now, if we set this equal to 0, we're going to have the quadratic trinomial x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0, which means that we could factor it and split it and solve it. So, to factor this guy, we end up with x minus 5 times x plus 3. How do we do that? We think what times what is negative 15, that if you combine together gives you the middle value negative 2, and that's the right combo right there. And of course, uh, we factor, because it's set equal to 0, we can now split it and solve. And if we actually split them and solved, we'd get x equals 5, that's one answer. The other answer would be x equals negative 3. Now, we can't just automatically say that both of those answers are the answers. We need to go back and make sure that the inside of the logarithms don't end up negative. All right, so this cannot be negative. This cannot be negative. It has to be greater than zero. It has to be greater than zero. It can't even be zero. So if you plug it in and you end up with zero right here, that's an extraneous solution. It can't work. So the inside values of the logarithms have to be greater than zero. So if I were to plug in five and there would be five squared that's 25, 25 minus 15, that's uh, 10. So that's a positive number that's greater than zero. So far, so good. Plug in the five right here, two times five is 10. That's greater than zero. So far, we have x equals five. When you try the other one, when you try negative three in here, negative three squared is nine, but nine take away 15 is negative six. And we know we can't have the logarithm of a negative. Once again, we cannot have the logarithm of a negative. You can't even have the logarithm of zero, right? You can't take log base three of zero either. So this has to be greater than zero. And we know that when we plug it in, we end up with a negative six. And that just doesn't cut it. So this is not an answer. The only answer that works is five.